Hello, welcome to this last video of this week's lecture. This uh, video again is optional, so it's not 100% uh, yeah, relevant for um, for the exam or for the homework. Um, There's just some additional information. Okay, so this video is on exploratory data analysis. And exploratory data analysis is just um, basically fancy for getting to know your data and trying to figure out how, what different variables mean in your data and how they um, yeah, correlate with other variables and um, what the relationship is between some values in some variables or the values in other variables. And um, yeah, pretty much just figuring out what your data actually means and uh, what kind of data you have. And um, yeah, you can, for example, with exploratory data analysis, also um, yeah, find out what the quality of your data is, like how noisy is it, how many missing values do you have. And um, yeah, there are a couple of different techniques that can be used here um, to just assess your data and figure out what you're dealing with. And um, as you've probably figured out already, this is something that is used um, in the beginning um, to figure out, um, yeah, how to work with the data later on and what might be interesting things that you could find in your data. Okay, so let's start with the first um, technique here. Um, the first one I want to cover is pivoting. And um, pivoting is pretty much just like a group by. Um, so we're grouping by some variable and then um, using an aggregation function to um, yeah, aggregate these groups. Um, yeah, and so let's start with the first example, which is just a normal group by, as you've already seen it before. Uh, we're using the Titanic data set again, and we're grouping by the sex, and um, we're using the mean as the aggregation function. And yeah, this is just going to show us all the other variables we have, um, and take the mean for female and male separately. And then, yeah, just display this as a new table. And um, yeah, now this is just one variable. So we're just grouped by, by the sex. But now, um, for example, we could also group by multiple variables. For example, in this next example, we would like to know the influence of uh, the survival rate um, based on the sex and the class the passenger was in. And for that, we could, for example, group by sex and class. Um, and by that, uh, this allows us to look at um, all the different combinations of um, female, male, and the different classes. And um, yeah, for that, we can take the survived value and take in, uh, the mean of these groups. And survived is a Boolean. But um, yeah, since we uh, take a mean over a group of Booleans, basically, um, we're by that computing the um, yeah the amount of true values, so the the fraction of true values in this group. Um, I hope that is clear. I think it's clearer when we look at the output here. So um, yeah, this is a value between zero and one, and this is just the um, distribution of zero uh, of true and false in each group. Okay. And um, yeah, since we group by two different variables, we now have a multi-index. And on the first level, we have the sex. On the second level, we have the class. And then the values in this uh, series are now just the, uh, yeah, the average survival rates. And um, yeah, this is pretty much all that is um, in a pivot table. And um, yeah, I will show you how you can do this more easily and how you can explore your data in that way um, yeah, with a special function. Um, yeah, but first of all, um, if you want to have this representation, but as a nicely rendered um, yeah, table by Jupyter Notebooks, you can just call reset index on this result. And this will um, yeah, add a new index column and make sure that we have uh, a normal index again, so this is an integer index now, and now we can print uh, this nice um, yeah, table representation again here. 
Okay. Um, yeah. And um, that actually is a privet table already, um, but usually these are represented in a different way. Um, if we call unstack on this, um, this is usually how they are represented. And you can see that the class is now um, distributed across the columns. And uh, yeah, the sex is in the rows. And now we have this matrix of um, yeah, survival rates for each of these two variables. Okay, and now for that, um, this exact thing, pandas already has a function. This function is called pivot table. And um, you specify three different parameters here. First of all, the values. And these are the values uh, over which is aggregated. So in our uh, example from before, this would be the survived column. Um, then you choose the index. And uh, as you can see in this, um, yeah, in this table up here, sex is already the index here. So we just choose our sex column as um, the index column in our pivot table. And then as the columns, as you can see in this table here, um, yeah, we choose our class. And then this will give us this exact table such that um, yeah, we specify just over which values we want to aggregate, then which variable should be the index and which variable, so which um, elements from a certain uh, variable or column should be um, in the columns of our pivot table. Okay, um, this pivot table function additionally uh, allows us to include margins. If we just set this margins um, parameter to true, and what margins are is just um, yeah the aggregated values over the rows and columns. So we just um, if I just execute this, this will be clear. Um, yeah, we aggregate over these um, over each row, and the result of the aggregation over the row is in this last um, yeah element here, which is under the all um, column, and we also have this all row here. And these are just um, the columns. So for, for the values in one, the class one, uh, we aggregate over the values. And the result of that is in um, yeah this all value down here. And um, yeah, by default, this aggregation of, um, of the uh, margins here is just the mean of all values. So this will just take the mean. Okay, but if we want to change the um, aggregation function and not only for the margins but also for just how we um, aggregate over our variable of our values um, we can specify this um, this egg func um, parameter and we can just pass the functions that we already know um, for aggregation to this and we can also pass multiples um, yeah and this will just do the aggregation for us and then if we pass multiple functions here, then we also get uh, multiple, yeah, basically pivot tables in one. So this first part here um, was uh, using the minimum aggregation function, and then the second part here was using the maximum one. And now, um, yeah, we also changed our values to fair, and not, um, yeah, it's not survivor er, uh, survived anymore since uh, yeah the minimum and the maximum for survived would not make much sense because they're booleans and the minimum would just be zero and the maximum would just be one okay um yeah now um, we can use multiple aggregation functions but we can also use multiple variables in our index for example and um, to achieve this we just pass multiple uh, variables to our index parameter. We do this with a basic list, for example, here, and now we get this, um, yeah, this uh, multi-index again, and this multi-index now includes two variables, and as you can see, we still have uh, this one variable as our columns, which is still the class, and uh, yeah, this allows you to just split the data up into um, yeah more groups, and to look at um, yeah the the distributions of multiple variables at the same time, or the yeah the combined distributions of multiple variables. Okay, and um, yeah now for the for the next part uh, we'll add this 
H course column again, which uh, already was done before. Um, so we use this cut function, which you have uh, seen in a, a previous video. And this just cuts the H, uh, this H column up into um, certain bins and we specify the bins here. So we have three H groups in the end and these groups are child, grown up and senior. And yeah, this also shows um, how the H course column in the end looks. Okay, and now what this is, uh, this pivot table JS uh, library. This is a special library which um, can use pandas data frames. So we just pass this data frame to pivot UI and then this will render um, a nice interactive version for pivot tables. And here we can um, yeah, basically interactively and very quickly change out the variables and change out the ag aggregation functions uh, without having to write the, the pandas code. And um, yeah, for example, what we've done before was using, um, yeah, we used the sex as our, um, as our index here. Then we use the P class as our uh, columns. And here you can select which uh, elements from the class you want. For now, we just select all of the classes. And then you can put um, the variable over which you aggregate up here. So if we just use the um, survival column, I have to um, set this to average first here. And then we can, yeah, now we can set the, the variable now uh, here. And if we use the survived um, column here, for example, we now get this pivot table. So this is what we've seen before, and it also includes margins, but this is now an interactive version and you can quickly um, yeah, switch out the, um, the method of how you aggregate. And as I said, uh, now this example uses the minimum function. And since we're using the survived column, these are all zero because false is zero. But if we don't use survived, but um, yeah, the age, for example, we now get um, the minimum ages for the different categories here. And this can be a very nice tool to just quickly explore your data and to quickly um, understand how different variables um, yeah, are, have a relationship with, uh, with each other. Um, and this also allows you to, um, to uh, use multiple variables. So again, this now is a multi-index and um, yeah, we now group by the sex and the um, part of embarkment. Okay, and this is just a tool I wanted to show, which is uh, very useful for interactive um, yeah, data exploration in Pandas. Okay, and uh, lastly, um, I want to talk a bit about profiling. And this profiling will, um, yeah, this will run for a bit since it's, uh, it already does a lot of calculations for us. And uh, what this profiling does with the data set is just, um, yeah, just going to calculate lots of different metrics and measures for each variable and also for um, pairs of variables. And then it will show all of this in a nice HTML format here. And um, yeah, there's just loads of information in here, which we can have a look at. And first of all, we have this overview, which tells us, for example, how many missing cells we have, uh, what the percentage of missing cells is, how many duplicate rows we have, um, yeah, how many variables, how many observations. These are just um, very interesting. Um, yeah, these are very interesting information which you most likely only need at the beginning. So when you're working with a new data set, but then it's very nice to have such a tool um, which allows you to just run this one line of code. Um, so as you can see here, it's just the import from pandas profiling. We import this profile report. And then we just create this profile record, a report and pass our data set to that. And this will create this whole um, HTML um, page for us, which tells us a lot about our data. Okay, and uh, now under this variables section, it, ju it just goes through all the variables. And then it tells us uh, how they're distributed, how many missing values are in this column, for example. Um, and if you have a look at this P class, for example, um, it shows us the distribution of the three classes here. So we can see 
um, the class 3 is represented the most. And we can also see um, that we have um, no missing values in our class here. And um, yeah, we have three distinct, three distinct um, values in this class category. And um, yeah, this age, for example, here, um, we can see that we have lots of missing values. This is also indicated by this missing tag in, uh, at the beginning here. And um, it shows us a, yeah, a histogram of what the values are, which can also be very useful if you just have a look at your data in this profiling and you don't really know yet how your data is distributed. And um, yeah, something you might notice already uh, in such a yeah, easy and quick uh, profiling operation is that we have this cut in our age here. And um, yeah, this might, for example, be interesting depending on what you try to do with your data. And um, yeah, what uh, something else I wanted to show is, for example, this high correlation. Uh, this is another tag that is showed and uh, is shown um, for variables that highly correlate with some other var uh, variable. And if we hover over this, this already tells us this highly correlates with one other field. It's um, the field embarked long. And this definitely makes sense because embarked is just the abbreviation of the embarked long. And um, yeah, each of these um, values match. So embarked and embarked long are very correlated. So they're you know, basically fully correlated since um, also we created embarked long from embarked. So yeah, this is just um, very interesting uh, to see if you have a new data set. Additionally, you get also uh, these plots here. You can have a look at these correlation matrices, which tell you um, which variable correlates strongly with which other variable. And here on the right, you can see the color bar um, with red being negative correlation, white is no correlation, and blue is a uh, strong positive correlation. Yeah. And then um, lastly, um, it also includes some more information about missing data. Here we have the variables as columns, and then it tells us um, yeah, just how many missing, uh, how many values are there in, um, yeah, in each category. And here we also can quickly see that, for example, this cabin column contains lots of, uh, yeah, has lots of missing data. And um, this can always be some indication of something went wrong or um, there's just a natural thing that this column might not have uh, that many values. And it's just very quick to see um, what is going on in, in your data without having to do uh, lots of you know, tedious working through the, the data frames manually. Um, yeah, and there are just uh, multiple rep representations of this data. And um, yeah, you can, you can look through this. It's uh, very interesting and um, yeah, practical to have such a tool. Okay, and that is it. Um, yeah, it also includes um, just the head and the tail of our data set. But yeah, that's it.